It's bold action today. What's cool and what's going on? We got the Los Angeles Chargers up next here for a roster breakdown and mock draft. A lot of things we need to talk about with this team. Will Brandon Staley be the head coach next year? What does this team need to do to stop blowing so many football games, man? Get it through. I don't know, but it's just uh, wild stuff. Anyway, we actually might have some thunder and lightning going on in the background right now. Who knows? Let's see what we get. But let's go ahead and get right into this thing. Starting off with the roster. See what's wrong first off. And then we'll get into that seven-round mock draft. Starting with the offensive line, which this offensive line has been okay. I mean, it's not been bad. I I'll say that. I, I do think that there's still some improvements that this team could make. But I do think at the tackle position, they should be okay this offseason, especially with Pipkins and his contract. It's a favorable contract. It's one you're not going to be able to get out of this year cap-wise. And it's not like he's a monster cap hit either. And he's not a terrible player. I mean, I don't grade him phenomenally. But I would say he's in that lower-end starting tier. He hasn't been great. He gets beat. But at the same time, again, he still has some talent. I think he could develop into a solid starter at some point. So we'll see if he ends up developing. He's this kind of a situation where I would draft somebody like in the mid to late rounds and just have kind of like somebody to develop behind him just in case, etc. Right? Like that's kind of what I would do. I wouldn't be looking to draft somebody in the first round unless somebody crazy falls to me. But that's kind of what I'm looking at. Somewhere in the mid rounds. Rashawn Slater, obviously, you got your, your franchise left tackle. And we'll say he hasn't played as good prior to, or, you know, with this injury. I think it's taken him some time. He has gotten beat more than what I'm used to seeing Rashawn Slater get beat as overall at least you, you got Slater he's a franchise player and then on the interior of the offensive line it's been okay too same thing I mean Zion Johnson Jamiri Slayer both been okay been solid and they get the job done Corey Lindsley's been injured right now Will Clapp stepped up and, and been okay you know nothing crazy guard wise I would say you don't need to do anything in this draft you drafted Jordan McFadden in like what the fifth round so he's your backup swing guard. You got Brennan James there too. I would say this is more of like a center situation because Corey Lindsley at this point, remember he's getting a little bit older, you might want to think about the future. And, and I put him in blue mainly because I don't know if he's a cap cut this offseason. I see him as more of a restructure type of uh, person this offseason. So keeping an eye on Corey Lindsley, but I do think drafting somebody in the mid to late rounds to develop behind Corey Lindsley for a season or two would be a, a smart option. Let's go on to the offense, uh, the receiver position now. And Quentin Johnson has definitely not lived up to the expectations, and, and it's it's something that we worried about in college with him, and it's the hands, right? He's a he's a body catcher. He needs to improve his hand catching ability. He needs to improve his blocking too. I will say that he's not a good blocker right now. He's he's just not getting open consistently enough either. So we know he's got the the speed, right? He's got that long striding ability, and your hope is that he can take that next leap next year and be maybe that Mike Williams type of replacement because I think he's very much a cap cut this offseason, especially coming off the injury. Like Mike Williams was looking really good too. It's, it's disappointing man because I think he could have had a breakout year I mean he's already had a breakout but I think he could have had a really big year for them this season because he was looking like you know prime Mike Williams early in the season so yeah that's unfortunate but I do think that he is probably a cut slash a trade option this offseason Keenan Allen is more of a restructure type of person in my eyes you cannot let Keenan Allen go he is been Justin Herbert's reliable target if you let him go then I think that that's a problem and you're going to need to draft somebody in the first round again if you do that and while Joshua Palmer I think can step up for Mike Williams in that loss like I think that Quentin Johnson is your hope that he can be that type of guy and then Joshua Palmer's a solid like a number three guy even a you know a low end number two type of receiver so yeah I mean he's like a two three type of guy and he's he's decent right I mean I, hey if I was a Jet, I'm as a Jets fan I'd love to have him in there instead of Alan Lazard <laughs> I mean, but anyway, uh, Joshua Palmer, Quinn Johnson, Keenan Allen, you figure on to be their starting three next year. And then Darius Davis gives you that special teams ability, a good punt returner. And uh, overall, not a bad room. Jalen Guyton, too, making some plays here and there. On to the tight end room. So overall, I would say with the receiver position, I don't think this is that big of a need because of what they've drafted and in the amount of picks that they spent on it. You could always look to improve it, but hopefully Joshua Palmer steps up right in there and, and you can work it all out. And then on to the tight end room, which is going to be a need for them with Gerald Everett being a free agent. So looking at a tight end would definitely be something that I would look at uh, possibly in the draft slash free agency. Both could be contingency plans just depending on 
where you know you're able to draft someone you have do have other bigger needs on this roster that we have to address too so i would bring in a free agent a tight end and maybe look in the mid round section third through fourth round range i think you could find a decent especially in this tight end class i don't think there's really anybody in the second round that i love taking for me personally so i think more on that late day two early day three somewhere on day three range is where i would be looking to take a tight end and you do have donald parham jr who's a is an okay tight end as well so that's kind of what my strategy would be at the tight end position and then the running back position i do think this is a need because austin eckler is a free agent now they could bring him back and eckler still i mean eckler the heckler i love heckler eckler but he is getting a little bit older now and you might want to think about it right i think it is time to start thinking about let's go ahead and, and get a replacement here at the running back position joshua kelly is also a free agent too i would imagine that they could bring joshua kelly back or bring somebody they'll bring somebody in a free agency i do like this draft in, in terms of somebody that would be an explosive playmaker for them in that second third round range that they could go out and get and and that would be a good weapon for them in terms of like you're trying to look at the offense and try and say to yourself do we want to look at a tight end or a running back because i think those are two big needs for them which one do i think is has a better value in terms of better players available in that second, third round range is where to, where I'll be looking for one of those guys. I feel like the running back position in this draft has more value as of right now. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Quarterback, obviously not a need. Justin Herbert just got that massive contract. He's under, you know, for the next, you know, five plus years. So we're good to go. And then we get onto the defense side of the ball. The defensive line is actually looking pretty good on the edge. I mean, this is a scary duo with Tui Tui Pelotu stepping up. So even with Bosa being a little injured, banged up, I mean, you're getting a little bit older with Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, both big contract tip hits this next season. And, and while I think that they probably end up restructuring both of these guys, you do have a question that one could be traded this offseason, especially with the emergence of Tui Tui Pelotu, who's been very, very good. So it wouldn't shock me if Bosa or Khalil Mack, one of the two, get traded, help clear up some space, because they're in the negative $44 million range. So I do think there's a realistic chance that one of them gets traded. More than likely, at least one of them gets restructured. Chris Rumpf, unfortunately, goes down with on injured reserve this week, which is a little sad because he's a you know decent situational pass rusher within his own right. On to the interior of the offensive line. So in terms of the edge position right now, I would say it's not a need. It's more of a restructure thing. But you could, it depends, right? It, it really depends. If you trade Mac or Bosa, you're going to get a draft pick. So if you do get a draft pick, then you're going to be able to spend on an edge rusher. That's kind of my view on it. The interior is more of the bigger need for them. They need to stop. I mean, they weren't terrible outside of like a couple of big runs that Detroit had. And, and throughout the season, they've been okay at stopping the run. It's not been like a huge weakness, but it's definitely not been a strength. And I still think that they could improve in that department. And I think finding a great nose tackle would be really, really good. And I think there's a couple of really good nose tackles in this draft class that they could target. And with Austin Johnson being a free agent this season, I do think that that would make a lot of sense to find a solid nose tackle like even you know around three range somewhere in there i think there's going to be some really good nose tackles available dny is also a need it is a need i think sebastian joseph day is somebody that you could bring back and restructure he's another guy where you could let him go save 7.5 million dollars i believe but you know he, he's a decent player and he, he can get after the quarterback and he, he's a reliable player on their defensive line you got ot tito ogbonia from UCLA, also as a situational player right now, getting more reps with the injuries that they've had. So we'll see how that with Scott Matlock recently getting injured, should I say. But he was like a 2023, uh, what was he, a late round throw, like a six round pick. Anyway, uh, that's kind of their rotation right now. Morgan Fox, who's a situational pass rusher. Nick Williams, been, been out there too, been playing a good amount of snaps for them, kind of as a starter. I mean, not quite as a starter. It's been more of Austin Johnson and Sebastian Joseph Day. However, Nick Nick Williams has been a, a piece for them that's been playing quite a bit. And he's been okay. You know, I haven't been seeing him make tons of plays just from watching Phil. I haven't watched any of these guys specifically. I've just watched every game from the Chargers. And I could just kind of notice players making plays or not making plays. Uh, so, yeah, I do think this interior needs to be upgraded, though, overall. And it starts with a nose tackle and maybe another pass rushing D end with some of the contracts, players getting older and things like that. Let's go on to the linebacking room, which should be okay for the future. Now, Eric Kendricks is a cut option this offseason, and I know Kendricks isn't, you know, prime Eric Kendricks, but he's still an okay player. I still see him making some plays. So I think he's a guy that you could keep around. Maybe he's a, a restructure type of, you know, take a pay cut type of player. 
Dayon Hentley, though, you, you figure on, like, I, I know I only rated him a 66, but this comes down to, just simply put, I haven't seen him enough out on field, right? He hasn't played this year. Um, he played in preseason, looked great. So you're hoping that, you know, once he gets out there, they're developing him right now, and you expect big things from Dayon Henley. I liked him a lot. I think he's a guy coming out from Washington State that's going to come in and be a great, solid run defender and add some coverage capability too. So your hope is that he can develop into that Eric Kendricks for the long haul. Kenneth Murray, I think, is on his way out. I think he'll end up in going into free agency. You got Nick Niedemann as a backup swing man, kind of left, uh, you know, another dude that can play out there and, and, and hang within his own right. So in terms of linebacker need in the draft, I don't think it's like that huge critical red alert type of thing. With Dion Hentley, spend a third-round pick on him. You still have Eric Kendricks in here. You could bring in a free agent. You could still draft somebody maybe in the later rounds to be a developmental guy. Let's talk about this secondary, though, which might be the biggest need on this roster. It's definitely one of them, I would say. And I think that this cornerback position has to be upgraded this next offseason. Part of it is on scheme. Part of it's, you know, player, player and personnel, stuff like that. But I do believe overall this, this cornerback room needs to be upgraded. Michael Davis is a free agent this offseason. And while he's a decent man coverage corner, he's not terrible. I think he's maybe a little underrated at this point in his career. I don't think he's a bad football player. I really don't. He, he'll get beat from time to time and, and whatnot. But he also has a tough division you're going against when you're going against Patrick Mahomes twice a year and stuff like that. It's never easy. Anyway, Michael Davis, not a terrible corner, but he's somebody that, unless you're bringing him back on the cheap, I'm, I'm probably going to let him go. And then you got, I mean, even Dean Leonard stepped up in his wake from Duke this past week when he got injured versus Detroit and was okay. He got beat a couple of times, got beat on one by Amon Ross St. Brown, I believe, that I saw. Overall, it wasn't bad. He also had a win against Amon Ross St. Brown, I believe, too. He had a pass deflection on him, I believe, in the end zone. Anyway, Dean Leonard, maybe he's a developmental guy. I don't know. That's somebody that we need to keep an eye out on. If he gets more playing time at the end of the season and starts looking good, then he could fill one of those positions. I still think it's an area that we need to upgrade in general, right? I still think we need to add talent into this room. Asante Samuel's a good zone corner, right? He's got those instincts, those ball hockey mentality that you love. I don't think he's the greatest in man coverage, right? I just don't think he has the length and overall uh, crazy, you know, he's not like an insane speed guy. His tackling ability isn't great either. So Asante does have his limitations, but you love him in his zone instincts that he has. Jazeer uh, Taylor has been decent too. I mean, he's been okay. He's not been bad. He's one of those guys you see get beat, but I think he's also a feisty dude and somebody that can be a quality slot player down the line. He's still a young guy, only in his second season and under contract. You could look at upgrading the position, but I would say this is more of like a bringing a free agent to back him up just in case, right? Your hope is that Taylor takes that next step next year and, and ends up being a quality starter for you. But I definitely think outside corner, let's look at finding somebody in this draft. And then safety-wise... Now, I don't think this is a huge need. I would bring Aloha Gilman back. He's earned a contract, in my opinion. I think he's got good instincts as well, especially in the box. Like, he's a good box player, and he's a, he's a downhill, ferocious guy. He makes plays and these hook curls and stuff like that. He, he's able to read the, read the quarterback's eyes and make plays. I, I don't think he's the greatest when it comes to, like, in the back end. You know what I mean? Like, if he's got to keep up with guys deep, I think that's where he, he struggles the most, right? I don't think he has insane speed. That's not his game. Uh, Derwin James, obviously really really good so you have Derwin James he's this movable chess piece in your secondary but I would like to see them get maybe more of a back-end safety right whether that's free agency or the draft your hope is though that JT Woods with his athleticism can develop into that right I just haven't seen enough of JT Woods to feel confident in that yet so I would probably try to bring in a free agent somebody that can come along at least you know can be that reliable back-end piece right maybe like a dominant KZ I feel like would be a great addition it's like somebody in that mold would really help them out in this secondary on to the mock draft though let's do this thing we got it was kind of <laughs> i don't know man you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let's do this thing we got this going on here but we got a pick going out here and the first one nate wiggins the cornerback from clemson is going to be the my first selection let's improve this secondary as much as we possibly can and i, I think it starts with nate wiggins one of these corners whether it's cooper Jean, whether it's um, you know, Cooley McKistry, Nate Wiggins, I think, are, are really good picks. Terry Arnold, I love Terry Arnold, man. He's a really good feisty corner. But Wiggins got to include his play strength for sure. Like, he's not the strongest of tacklers. But his coverage ability, his looseness of a, as an athlete, especially at six foot two, is really impressive. So it's just a matter of hitting a little bit, you know, getting a little 
little stronger, right? Bulk up, get a little bit more feisty. And, and you know, I think he's going to be a, a really good corner. But you'll love the lockdown skills that he provides in coverage. On to the second round. I'm going with Travion Henderson from the Ohio State University. To me, he is the highest floor running back in this draft class. Like, I just know he's going to be a good running back. You know what I mean? Like, he's just one of those guys where he's got the speed. The speed is there, man. He has got explosive burst. He's got solid receiving skills. He's a three-down player. I think his pass protection still needs a little work, but he's very willing in everything like that. He's not the strongest of guys. He's not he doesn't have the craziest contact balance. He's not like Trey Benson level of break tackles and stuff like that, but he's got the speed, right? He's got that game-breaking speed where he gets a step on you, it's over. You're not catching this guy. He definitely has NFL plus speed. And that is, is going to be huge. And especially when you're getting a running back, you know, a pick 45, I want a difference maker. I believe he can be that difference maker in somebody that the Chargers have been looking for for a long time, right? As that, that guy who can be, he can do it all too. And it's not like I think he's just going to be this or that. I think he can do everything. He could be that full three down player. On to the third round. I'm going with the Godfather. I'll make off an you can't refuse. Dante Colleone from Cincinnati, the Bearcat. This dude is a nose tackle through and through. And he's also decent at getting after the passer. Like, he's a, he's a loose athlete, man. He really is. And that's the one thing that I was, you know, when you look at nose tackles, you have to have that wiggle, right? You know what I'm saying? You got to have that wiggle. Like, Wiggins, I don't know. We got the wiggles out here. But you have to have the maneuverability to be able to two-gap. That is so critical as a nose tackle. He has that. He has that loose athleticism. Well, he does. he's not an elite athlete. He's not going to, you know, Jalen Carter you or anything like that. But he can definitely get after the passer, man. And he has some really good flashes. And that's what I want from a good nose tackle is, yeah, I want you to do your job and, and be able to hold up in the run game. But, you know, you also have flashes as a, as a pass rusher. And they've got some good pass rushers, right? I mean, you got Bosa, you got Mack, you got Tui Tu, Pelotu. You got guys who can get after the passer. Let's get a guy who's going to make everybody else's job easier. And that is the godfather here in Dante Colleone. On to our fourth round selection. Another one of those guys that I think is underrated, slept on at the moment. Ben Sinnott from Kansas State. The other, you know, another cat. We're going with all the cats today. But this guy is a really good tight end, man. And, and he's one of those dudes where... He might be more of an H-back slash a hybrid guy, but I love his blocking prowess. I love his move blocking prowess. He's a great lead blocker. He's got loose athleticism. He's got strong hands. He just checks off every box for me as a solid tight end in the NFL for a very long time. And you can use this guy on multiple different ways or multiple different ways. You can get the ball in his hands and just sweeps and just get creative with him. I think he's just a movable chess piece and he doesn't have many liabilities. He's He's not a hyper crazy athlete. I don't think he's the biggest guy, longest guy, things like that. He doesn't have a massive wingspan, but he is just checks off the boxes as that quality tight end that you come in here, you bring in that veteran, and he'll be that number two guy right away. On to the fifth round. I'm going with Josh Fryer from the Ohio State University. We're going back to Ohio State, and this guy is a grappler all right he is a grappler he's got super strong hands where he just you know what i mean he just turns you with his hands i do think his footwork's a little clunky like well, he's got decent foot speed he doesn't have the great he's a little top heavy you know what i mean i think his his balance and his body control is what's really lacking with him those second level blocks you know like if he he connects he's he's going to be awesome right but i do think he's a little clunky a little top heavy so there's some some limitations to his game but what i love about him is his nfl power his nfl length profile that he has and build like he's just got an insane upper body it's uh really really strong on to our next pick tonka Hemmings, Hemmingsway from south carolina He's been a guy there in South Carolina who's been a consistent disruptor for them, right? Whether it's getting after the quarterback with his quickness, whether it's batting down passes, making plays in the backfield, just been a nice, reliable dude for them in South Carolina getting after the quarterback. And that's somebody that can be that rotational player early on, right? Probably only going to play like 100 snaps early in his career. And maybe as he goes on, right, he can be that Morgan Fox type of player for them, Deanne Sebastian Joseph Day. And, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at here in the mold here with Tonka Hemmings way. On to Brian Hudson from Louisville. He's a guy that flashed for me as I was watching like Jahar Jordan slash the Notre Dame tape. 
And I thought that he held up on his own, man. A lot of a lot of guys have gotten beat from that Notre Dame defensive line. And I felt like he did a decent job holding up. And somebody that's got some decent strength, got a good size profile, decent solid NFL length. And somebody that just caught my eye. Just one of those dudes where he's like, yeah, this guy checks off every box. I think he can be a solid center in the NFL. You let him develop behind Corey Lindsley, and I could see him being the long-term starter. So that's why I'm taking a chance on him. An underrated guy. And then finally, with our last pick, I'm going with Mohamed Toure from Rutgers. Another dude that just flashed on film for me. I've actually watched a lot of Rutgers this year. Max Melton, I like Tyreen Powell. I think there's they've got a lot of quality players on that, that Rutgers defense. And this is another dude that just you know, when I was watching those guys, I'm like, who's number one? Who is this guy? He's just destroying. I mean, he's got a crazy blitzing tone to him, man. I love his ferociousness. I don't think he's the strongest of guys, you know, going block and stuff like that. But yeah, I like him a lot. I think he could be a really nice blitzing linebacker, somebody that, you know, with his overall athleticism, maybe can develop into a nice quality linebacker. That's somebody that I'm looking to take. So recapping our draft here and the eight picks that we were overall able to loo to and looking at the roster, the loo, I don't know why I said that, but I gotta go to the loo. But anyway, uh, offensive line wise, we added in a couple of developmental pieces. I think they've got their solidified starters going into next season, but I do like Josh Fryer slash Brian Hudson as some developmental guys, at least if nothing else, as some depth for them. And then a uh, tight end wise, Ben Sinnott. Probably a nice number two guy early on. Let him do, you know, get get the ball in his hands and some design plays. But I love his blocking prowess, and I do think he can be an impact right away with those blocking skills. And then running back wise, a day one starter is Travion Henderson. I just one of those guys. Like I talk about, I think he's very very good. Checks off all the boxes that you look for from a three down player. The receiving skills, the speed is there, man. He's got that explosive gear. Just somebody that I want on my team, and I really really do like him. And I think he'll be a nice running back replacement for Austin Eckler. On to the defense side of the ball. Dante Coley on the godfather himself comes onto that defense. Look at that man. <laughs> Just look at those eyes. <laughs> He's got to want him staring down me if I'm an offensive lineman. So, yeah, you go ahead and bring in the godfather to that defensive line. Be that nose tackle that they need. And then we do add in Tonka Hemingway as well to that defensive line as that rotational pass rusher. And then linebacker, we talked about Mohamed Toure as a developmental guy. But our big addition in terms of draft pick wise, Nate Wiggins in the cornerback room. He comes in, is that replacement for Michael Davis, I almost said Douglas, but uh, got some good movies over there. And um, Asante Samuel, hopefully this is Taylor, takes that next step. But you bring in a free agent just in case. And that is my overall view for the Los Angeles Bolt Chargers this offseason. Also going to need to get a new coach, I think. Just kind of is what it is. I mean, I I don't know. Brandon Staley, I do think, is probably going to get fired after this offseason, especially if they don't make the playoffs. I don't know, man. But Tom Telesco going to have a, another important draft ahead of him, and we'll see what he can do. Anyway, let me know what you think. Agree or disagree on what the Los Angeles Chargers should do. Let you know. Let me know what your plans are for what this team should do in there, your blueprint. But I hope you have a really cool day. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. I'll talk to you later.